So maybe you found this video because someone told you you need to reset your Reaper settings or reset your preferences or reinstall Reaper or something like that. Most of the time, that's not necessary. I think that's bad advice. But in this video, we will look at all the various preference files and how you can make changes manually or uh, delete them entirely and reset. So if you're thinking about reinstalling Reaper or resetting your preferences, there's probably some sort of problem. Let's assume that you can actually get into Reaper and make changes. So let's start with that. So if you can get into Reaper, we go to the options menu and then show Reaper resource path in explorer slash finder. And this folder contains all of the preference files, all of the related uh, files that Reaper uses um, that makes it custom for you. So the main preference file is reaper.ini. And this file is essentially just a plain text file that you can edit if you need to. Uh, and it contains pretty much everything in the preferences window, um, with the exception of certain things like mouse modifiers. So if we open up the preferences, the general page, paths, keyboard multi-touch, project, tracks and defaults, media item defaults, all this stuff is saved into that file. Reaper has a built-in function for exporting your configuration. That's on the general page. There's import and export configuration. So export creates a zip file, and you can choose all the different criteria for what is being saved into there. Um, but essentially, all that's doing is saving the contents of your Reaper folder and putting it inside of the configurations folder as a zip file. Um, it does make it more portable, but if you know basic things about running a computer, how to select files, how to copy them, how to paste them, how to create a zip file. You don't really need that. It can be a good thing to do. Let's say you first install Reaper, export your config so it's just your basic settings saved somewhere. You can customize everything the way you want, export again, and then you have you know your custom things. So you can always go back to the factory defaults or go back to yours. And it's very unlikely that your settings have been corrupted. Um, in my 12 years or so of using Reaper, there's one time I actually had to remove Reaper.ini and start over. And I only did that because the Reaper developers themselves suggested resetting. I see it so often on forums and Facebook groups and stuff to reset Reaper or delete your preferences. It's not necessary in most cases. It's very unlikely you've corrupted your settings. Um, you can always ask me if you need advice on any particular feature or something that's not working correctly for you. And if you have one of those configuration files, you use the import function to get that back and to install it. It will install the files and restart Reaper. So that file was reaper.ini. If you open this up in a plain text editor, you can actually make changes yourself. Most of the time, you're not going to need this. But if you're doing things like um, changing computers and you need to do something like change um, a username, something like that. So here's an example where um, my default click setting is actually set to my max sample library setting. So I could go in here and remove this and save it, and then Reaper will not use that old computer's settings. Often my settings are going from Mac to Windows. Some things are easier to change manually inside of the text editor. If I change my username on my Windows install, to something else, I, would, I could change that here. And you could even batch rename everything if you wanted. Yeah, so things like last the last project you worked on is saved there, the last script that you loaded, all these different things that Reaper keeps track of. So outside of that, there are a lot of other preference files and um, other ways that you can back things up or import. So let's move on to the mouse modifiers. This is whatever you do with click and drag, left click, right click, right drag, things like that. These are all configurable in the mouse modifiers section of preferences. And if you want to import, export, or reset anything in here, there is this import export button. So you can save modifiers for just this context. So just track left click. You can load it for this context. You can reset to factory default for just this page. Save modifiers for all contexts, load modifiers for all contexts, and reset for uh, to factory default. If something's messed up with your mouse and you're doing stuff in Reaper and it's just not behaving how you expect, you can try resetting here 
This is all saved into Reaper Mouse.ini. All your custom settings for mouse modifiers are saved into Reaper Mouse.ini. So you won't see all the settings, only the ones that you've actually manually changed from the factory defaults. So how about the action list? If you've been using Reaper for any length of time, you've been using action list a lot, and you've probably been making custom shortcuts and assigning different things to your keyboard. If you want to reset anything, that's under key map and restore all shortcut bindings to factory defaults. If we want to back up all of our actions, we can use the export uh, shortcut key map function. We can export this to a single file that has all of our actions and assignments in there. We can select a single thing, go to key map, export shortcut key map, and that will just do a single for any selected uh, actions. And we can also import key maps so from other users or your own backups. And all that stuff is saved into reaper kb.ini. So if we look in here, this is all of the actions, SWS assignments, everything that you've done for um, every context of the um, action list. If you delete this, it will delete any of the custom actions, uh, scripts, and assignments, but all the factory default stuff will still be there. If you want to back up, this is the best way to do that. Just keep track of this kb.ini file. I will say using kb.ini to actually make changes to any of this stuff, it's not really user readable or editable. You can see some key assignments here and which script it's attached to, but it's not really easy to edit. There are some things you can get from this, like um, if you're using this custom play selected item action that I have set up, you can see that the um, individual actions for that custom action are right there inside. Any of these custom actions, you can see the list of the actions inside. So far, we've talked about the main preference file, mouse modifiers, and the action list. Now there's extensions, and there's the repack extension and the SWS extension. And again, these have their own preference files. The SWS extension doesn't have a built-in way of exporting your preferences. The majority of the preferences for SWS stuff is in snm.ini. We've got things like the QBus generator, item notes, region playlist preferences, SWS resources. Those are all saved in here. And um, there's also things like the number of actions for certain things. So uh, NB of actions. There's a lot of SWS actions that use different slot numbers. So for example, if we wanted to change the number of actions listed in the action list for the function set effects blank offline for selected tracks, it comes with up to eight, but we can customize this in here, snm underscore fx off equals eight. Just change this to 16, 12, whatever you want. And then next time you run Reaper, you will have that many actions in the action list for that function. This is one of the situations where you actually need this preference file because there isn't a function inside of Reaper to do this manually. snm.ini is the main one for SWS extensions, but then there are some others. So snm cycle actions. This is all your cycle actions from the cycle action editor. The context of this window that you see here is actually saved into this file here. They warn you not to tweak this by hand. So basically, just be aware of this, that this is where it saves into. Don't delete this file if you don't want to delete all your cycle actions. Um, in here, there is import and export function. Import to section main, import to all sections, export selected, export section main, export all sections, reset section main, and reset all sections. So. Wouldn't recommend doing that unless you just really want to delete everything. Uh, and there are different sections of the uh, SWS cycle action editor. Most people are only using the main section. There's also br.ini. This is for the contextual toolbars and some other functions that uh, were contributed by the user breeder into the SWS extension. The preferences for SWS autocolor icon is saved into SWS autocolor icon. And uh, so all of the changes that I've made to my SWS autocolor are listed here. And again, this is a situation where there's no function for import or export of this setting uh, within Reaper. So if you want to save your settings and give them to someone else, a 
or back up your settings to import into a new configuration, you have to use this uh, INI file. OK, so the last one I'm going to show you here is for the repack extension. There are a few preferences inside of repack, things like uh, keeping track of which repositories are installed, uh, which packages are installed, things like that. If you were setting up a new system, there's not a lot of preferences in repack that you would lose. There's just a few different things here, the different uh, remote packages that I've imported and things like that. And there's one more thing I want to show you here. I don't recommend using this. Again, I think if you have a situation with Reaper where you've got some bug or something like that, unless it's the Reaper developers directly telling you to reset your Reaper settings, there's no need to. But on Windows, there is this option. In the Start menu, find Reaper x64, and then there's going to be this Reset Configuration option, uh, Reset to Factory Defaults. I'm not 100% sure on what you actually lose doing this. If it just resets the preferences or if it just deletes everything, I think it's the last resort. I think this is, <laughs> I think it's unnecessary to use this in 99.9% .9 of cases. Yeah, just let us know in the Reaper forum or in the Facebook groups or something like that what your problem is. Someone will know the answer and it's not going to be reinstall and it's not going to be delete your preferences. It's not that kind of DAW. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon. And visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.